Hello and welcome to the Investing Iguana, the channel where I share with you tips and tricks on how to grow your money and achieve financial freedom. I'm your host, Iggy, and today we're going to talk about how to save money on taxes and fees when investing in Singapore. Singapore is a great place to invest, whether you're a local or a foreigner. It has a robust economy, a pro-business environment, a skilled workforce, and a strategic location as a trading hub in Asia. But investing in Singapore also comes with some costs, such as taxes and fees that can eat into your returns. So how can you minimize these costs and maximize your profits? Here are some strategies that you can use. Strategy number one, invest in tax-advantaged savings plans. One of the easiest ways to save money on taxes is to invest in tax-advantaged savings plans, such as the Supplementary Retirement Scheme, SRS, and the Central Provident Fund, CPF. These are government-sponsored schemes that allow you to save for your retirement and enjoy tax benefits at the same time. The SRS is a voluntary scheme that lets you contribute up to $15,300 per year if you are a Singapore citizen or permanent resident, or $35,700 per year if you are a foreigner. You can invest your SRS funds in various products, such as stocks, bonds, unit trusts, and insurance policies. The best part is that your contributions are tax-deductible, meaning that they reduce your taxable income for the year. You also don't have to pay any tax on the interest or dividends that you earn from your SRS investments until you withdraw them. The CPF is a mandatory scheme that requires you to contribute a percentage of your monthly salary to four accounts, the Ordinary Account, OA, the Special Account, SA, the Medisave Account, MA, and the Retirement Account, RA. You can use your OA funds for housing, education, and investment purposes, your SA funds for retirement and investment purposes, your MA funds for healthcare expenses, and your RA funds for retirement income. The good news is that your CPF contributions are also tax deductible, and you don't have to pay any tax on the interest that you earn from your CPF accounts. The interest rates are also quite attractive, 2.5% per year for the OA, 4% per year for the SA and MA, an extra 1% per year for the first $60,000 of your combined CPF balances, and an extra 1% per year for the first $30,000 of your combined CPF balances if you are aged 55 and above. Strategy number two, invest in tax-exempt products. Another way to save money on taxes is to invest in products that are exempt from income tax in Singapore. These include Singapore Savings Bonds, SSBs. These are government-backed bonds that pay you interest every six months. You can invest up to $200,000 in SSBs per calendar month, and you can redeem them at any time without penalty. The interest that you earn from SSBs is not taxable. You can also invest in exchange-traded funds, ETFs. These are funds that track the performance of a basket of securities, such as stocks or bonds. You can buy and sell ETFs on the Singapore Exchange, SGX, like any other stock. The dividends that you receive from ETFs are not taxable if they are derived from specified income outside Singapore. You can also consider real estate investment trusts. REITs these are funds that invest in income-generating properties, such as malls, offices, hotels, and warehouses. You can also buy and sell REITs on the SGX like any other stock. The distributions that you receive from REITs are not taxable if they are derived from specified income outside Singapore. REITs are required to distribute at least 90% of their taxable income to their unit holders in order to enjoy tax transparency. This means that the REIT itself does not pay any corporate tax on its income, but the unit holders are taxed on their share of the income according to their own tax status. There are currently 45 REITs listed on the SGX, with a total market capitalization of about $130 billion as of December 31, 2022. They span various property segments, such as retail, office, industrial, hospitality, healthcare, data center, and logistics. Some of the largest and most popular REITs in Singapore include Capitaland Integrated Commercial Trust, CICT, Maple Tree Logistics Trust, MLT, Ascendas REIT, Ariat, Fraser's Centerpoint Trust, FCT, and Keppel DC REIT, KDC REIT.
Strategy number three, invest in low-cost products. The third way to save money on fees is to invest in products that have low costs associated with them. These include robo-advisors. These are online platforms that use algorithms to create and manage your investment portfolio based on your risk profile and goals. You can start investing with robo-advisors with as little as $50 per month, but this depends on the robo-advisor platform that you choose. They charge very low fees compared to traditional financial advisors or fund managers. Some examples of robo-advisors in Singapore are StashAway, Syfe, and Dowis, and MoneyOwl. Robo-advisors use different methods to allocate and rebalance your portfolio, such as risk parity, factor investing, or dynamic asset allocation. They also use different benchmarks to measure their performance, such as market indices or inflation. Another consideration would be online brokerages. These are platforms that allow you to buy and sell securities online without going through a middleman. You can access a wide range of markets and products with online brokerages, such as stocks, bonds, ETFs, REITs, options, futures, forex, and cryptocurrencies, but this depends on the online brokerage platform that you choose. You can also enjoy lower commissions and fees compared to traditional brokerages or banks. Online brokerages have different account types and requirements for different investors. Some of the common account types include cash accounts, margin accounts, CDP-linked accounts, and custodian accounts. Some of the common account requirements include minimum initial deposit, minimum balance, minimum trading activity, and KYC, know your customer, verification. The fourth type of investment would be index funds. These are funds that aim to replicate the performance of a market index, such as the Straits Times Index, STI, or the MSCI Singapore Index, CMSCI. You can invest in index funds through ETFs or unit trusts that track these indices. Index funds have lower management fees than actively managed funds because they don't require much research or trading activity. Index funds offer investors exposure to a diversified portfolio of securities that represent a particular market or sector. They also provide consistent returns that match the market performance, minus the fees and expenses. Index funds have different risk and return profiles, depending on the volatility and growth potential of the underlying index. Some common risk and return factors include market risk, currency risk, liquidity risk, and dividend yield. Strategy number four, invest in offshore products. Another way to save money on taxes is to invest in products that are based outside Singapore. These include foreign stocks. These are shares of companies that are listed on foreign stock exchanges, such as the New York Stock Exchange, NYSE, the NASDAQ Stock Market, NASDAQ, the London Stock Exchange, LSE, the Tokyo Stock Exchange, TSE, the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, HKEX, and the Australian Securities Exchange, ASX. You can buy and sell foreign stocks through online brokerages that offer access to global markets. The dividends that you receive from foreign stocks are not taxable in Singapore if they are derived from specified income outside Singapore. However, you may have to pay withholding tax in the source country, which varies depending on the tax treaty between Singapore and that country. You may also have to pay currency conversion fees when you exchange your Singapore dollars for foreign currencies or vice versa. Investing in foreign stocks may incur additional costs, such as brokerage fees, platform fees, exchange fees, dividend handling fees, and custodian fees. You should compare the fees and charges of different online brokerages and platforms before choosing one that suits your needs. You can also consider investing in foreign funds. These are funds that invest in securities that are based outside Singapore, such as foreign stocks, bonds, ETFs, REITs, or commodities. You can invest in foreign funds through unit trusts or ETFs. The distributions that you receive from foreign funds are not taxable in Singapore if they are derived from specified income outside Singapore. However, you may also have to pay withholding tax in the source country, currency conversion fees, and fund management fees. Investing in foreign funds also involves various risks, such as market risk, currency risk, liquidity risk, and political risk. You should do your due diligence and research on the foreign markets and funds that you are interested in before investing.
Strategy number five, invest in products that have tax incentives. The last way to save money on taxes is to invest in products that have tax incentives from the Singapore government. These include Angel Investors Tax Deduction Scheme, AITD. This was a scheme that encouraged individuals to invest in startups and early stage companies in Singapore. Under this scheme, you could claim a tax deduction of 50% of your investment amount up to a maximum of $500,000 per year of assessment. You had to hold your investment for at least two years and meet certain criteria to qualify for this scheme. However, this scheme has lapsed after March 31, 2020 and no new approvals or renewals of the angel investor status are granted for any period commencing after that date. However, such schemes may reopen in the future. Investing in Singapore can be rewarding if you know how to save money on taxes and fees. By using these strategies, you can reduce your costs and increase your returns over time. Remember to always do your own research before investing in any product or service and consult a professional if you need more guidance. That's all for today's episode of The Investing Iguana. I hope you learned something new and useful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Also feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions or feedback. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.